job. A few of the members with me that dealt with the autopsy of the Sunday school. And in looking at that, it reminds us that if we don't do anything different, the Sunday school is going to die. And I thank God as I listen to the presentation and those around with represent from various churches. It reminds me that Sunday school is really the basis for our church. And many of us have been exposed to Sunday school, brought up in Sunday school, taught the that basic lessons of Sunday school and kind of carried over into our lives. But yet we've got to the point where we've got to sort of minimize it. So you hear more emphasis. We've been looking for all the things that we can do to help revitalize, energize, and move forward in our growth, in spiritual growth. But I would like Sister Ann Pleasant to share with me that she said, I did a little bit too much. My niece was there, and she was one that was invited to be there, and she just couldn't make it. My Sister Pleasant, I feel like I did too much on yesterday. <laughs> back trying to give me problems, but I thank God we're here this morning. Amen. Just for your pleasure, I'd like to share with you a message from the Gospel writer of St. John. In the 11th chapter, there's a story that all of us know, and sit around this man called Lazarus. And he said, wait a minute, Lazarus, was dead. Well, I wore my black suit today because he was dead. But now he's alive. But in John 11th chapter, beginning with verse number 39, it reads like this. Jesus said, take you away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said unto him, Lord, by this time, he stinks. And he's been dead for four days. Jesus said unto her, said I not unto you, that if you would believe, then thou shalt see the glory of God. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, he prayed, y'all, Father, I thank you that you have heard me, and I know that thou heard me always, but because of the people who stand by and said it, that they may believe that you have sent me. When Jesus had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And when he was dead, came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes. His face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus said unto him, Loose him and let him go. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did believed on him. But some of them went their way to the Pharisees. These are the ones that you would thought they would believe, but they went to the Pharisees and told them what things Jesus had done. Let me stop it right there. This was a group that went to tell, look what Jesus had done. He had brought a man from the dead and brought him back to life. I'd like you to thought this morning, that's distracted from the verse 42nd, 43rd, and 44. And you see, if you got your King James Version, those are the words, very last, are in red. And the word says this, Lazarus, come forth, loose him, and let him go. I like you to thought this morning, rise, come forth, go free. Rise, Come forth, go free. This is the last of the eight verses 
eight texts I shared with you where Jesus spoke the word rise. Well, when you look at this, you never said where Jesus said rise. So you wonder, Reverend, how you come up with the idea? Because when Jesus spoke this word, all thing he said to him was, Lazarus, come forth. Well, I got a little secret for you. If you look back at verse number 34 in the same chapter, it says this. Jesus said this. Where have you laid him? Y'all, don't you know that no one ever been buried standing up? Everyone that's been buried have always been laid down. And when you look at this verse number 34, I'm excuse me, number uh, 43, Jesus spoke the words, Lazarus, come forth. So in order for Lazarus to come forth, he had to rise. So that's how I extracted the thought, rise. Then the second part says, come forth of our text. But then, Reverend, you said the third part of your text is, go free. Well, to look at the last words that Jesus spoke unto the crowd, he said, loose him and let him go free. Loose him and let him go. And by the way, Bar uh, Brother Bash, you mentioned about eight words. If you look at his nine words here, if you take out the word and, it's eight words. I, when you spoke it, I said, Lord have mercy, you just read what the word says. Eight is symbolic, y'all, of a brand new beginning. So when Jesus spoke to him, let him go free, he was starting with a brand new beginning. Take down the grave clothes, let him come forth. He's no longer in the grave, he's no longer lying down, and now he's up. It's interesting that when I look at and share with you this term that Jesus used to rise, that he's concerned with us. And I said that he wants to be active, caring for activities in our life. Rise is also very interesting because that is a commandment. That is something that Jesus says that he wants us to move forward. And it's interesting too that I share with you that of the eight rises that I've indicated in the four gospel writers, five of those came from Luke. One of them came from Mark, and the other two came out of John. And John was the last one, and the last one I'm bringing to you was the one where Lazarus had to come forth out of the grave. John was the only writer that took time out to share with us about the story of Lazarus. Yes, he does indicate that there was a family of three, Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. The other writers indicate about Martha and Mary, but John was the only one that brings forth the story and the event that Lazarus was also part of the family. And he was a brother, two sisters and one son. And when John wrote this, it was telling us that Jesus was necessary to move and let them know that he also had power over death. He has power over all the adversities in all our lives. While he was here, he was doing things to let them know that I have the power of God. God has the power now to move beyond whatever problems, whatever concerns, whatever conditions you may find yourself in, he has a, a, a power to overcome all of those. But when John wrote this, he indicated in the 11th chapter that Lazarus was sick. I've got news for you. Sickness is very prevalent. I don't care where you go. You can go anywhere in the world, there's always be, will be some kind of affirmative, some kind of sickness, something that will cause our bodies to not to be at the level they should be. He said that Lazarus was sick. And because he was sick, Mary and Martha knew exactly who had authority over sickness. So what they did was, hey, why don't we call for Jesus? But why would they want to call for Jesus? Well, John gave us another insight 
For he said that they sent to Jesus because he loved them. Aren't you glad that God loves us? God cares for us. God sees us. God knows us. And God understands us even in our weakest state when sickness tries to bring us down. And verse number five says this. This sickness, Jesus, excuse me, verse number four says, this sickness was not unto death, but that the glory of God will be revealed. Amen. So they were looking at him as being sick unto death, but Jesus knew that he might have died, but in the end, God's going to have the final say so. Mm -hmm. I share with you that I don't care what's taking place in your life, always remember God has the final say so. Yes. Some things we might not know and the kid under fully understand, but yes. God knows and God sees. The fifth verse of the 11th chapter says, Now Jesus loved Martha, his sister, and Lazarus. Yes. Aren't you glad that the word of God says, even John 3 16 said it so very clearly, God so loved the world yes. that he gave his only begotten son. God, Jesus loved us so. They was willing to go and give us the best he had, and that was his own life for our sins. Yeah. Look what Jesus did here. Jesus knew that Lazarus' sickness would ultimately carry him to death, but he recognized he had power over death. Mm -hmm. Jesus sees the condition you're going through with. And the next verse says that he waited two days. Mm -hmm. Two days. He would not even respond. Sometimes we wonder, God, where are you? God, why aren't you moving right now? Why aren't you coming in a need? I need you right now. We Amen. may not come when you want him. Yeah. But let me tell you, he's always right on time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Jesus, two days, two days he was wandered. Two days he never came. But then he told the disciples, well, it's time for us to go to Jerusalem. And they said, go to Jerusalem. Why? He said, because Lazarus is asleep. Now, this is awful strange. I imagine the disciples' mind, they were looking and said, Larry is sleeping, and you want us to go and wake him up? <laughs> that don't make any sense. Mm -hmm. And Jerusalem is only two four laws uh, back away from, but why do you want to? Jesus said, look here. He said, you don't fully understand. He's sleeping, but I must go and wake him up out of the sleep. Lord, why do you want to travel all the way over here to wake him up? Uh, why don't you call him on the cell phone? Why don't you text him? And why don't you do something? Why don't you do some long clock or something? Why don't you wake him up? Jesus said, no, you don't fully understand. And the next verse says this. Jesus, in the 14th verse, said, he said unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. When the word dead is mentioned, it's like a, a dagger in your heart. And I heard him say that so tired, we look at death and say, oh my God, it's so bad. How can this thing be? But he said, Lazarus is dead. They did not fully understand, but then he turned back around and said, you call death sleep, but Jesus realized the state he was in right now was not a state he's going to stay in. Amen. And I want to tell you right now, the condition you might be going through with, God said, you don't see the end, but I know what the end will be, and I will give you the victory over all that you experience in this life. God is good all the time. Yes. And all the time, God is good. Yes. He delayed by two more days. And in the same, Jesus made a delay. I found out even earlier that I shared it with you from sermon number four when I talked about Jerry's daughter. She was sick. But then he delayed in going there. He was supposed to be going there, but remember the woman with the issue of blood? She stopped along the way, and by the time she got healed and got that straightened out, they turned around, the servant came back to him and said, hey, you don't need to come to Jared's house, for she is dead. He was delayed in getting to Jared's house, but let me tell you, delay does not mean you've been denied. All right. All right. Thank you, Lord. And because yeah. he was not denied, Jared's daughter still ended up getting up. I share with you that when I look at these eight uh, 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 rises that Jesus talked about, three of them were centered around this idea of death. And let me tell, tell you that sometimes we won't, we fear the unknown because we've never been, anybody been there have now never came back and told us what it's all about except for Jesus Christ himself. All right. 
Because when he got up, he declared all power here on earth is in my hand. He said, I got the power over death. I got the power over grave. I got the victory. Yes. Uh -huh. But everyone feel this thing called death. And I'm so glad that when I read the gospel writers, it let me know that Jesus said of the eight that was there, three of them were centered around this idea of death. Let me give you a backup for a moment and help you understand that. The first one I talked to you about was with Jairus' daughter. And she died in the house. And Jesus came to the house and spoke the words, rise, and she got up in the house. The second death I talked to you about was the widow of Nun. She was old and she was watching the widow was going with her son on the way to the graveyard. And Jesus stopped by and laid hands on the coffin and told him, sit up. <laughs> rise up and then speak up. And he got up. The third thing, though, is the one that's what's even more interesting is the story we're looking at today. And it was sent around that death came in. Jesus was delayed in getting there, but he found himself in already buried in the grave. Mm -hmm. And you heard the story said that he was dead, had been dead for at least four days. But aren't you glad that God is not moved by our time? Aren't you glad that God looks beyond yes. what we consider limitations of ourselves? Oh, yes. But God's eye yes. can see things that you can't even see. Yes. Yes. Because of who God is, yes. he is the one that will bring forth all that he promised that would take place. He was delayed in getting there. He was delayed. And let me tell you, when I look at that, he said the place was 15 furlough. It was only two miles away. And Jesus took two days just to get there. And he was doing this for a reason, y'all. He said, I'm going to just take my time, but when I get there, I'll be on time. Yes, yes. And now sometimes we say, Lord, we know you're going to answer. God said, I hear you. I understand you, but you got to wait. You got to keep the faith. You got to hold on and hold out. And in the end, I will give you the victory. Yes. All right. Don't you know that God will not leave us and God will not forsake us? And when Jesus showed up there where Martha and Mary was, and where Lazarus also was. He was not longer in the household, but Lazarus now had another residence. His residence was in the graveyard. Mm -hmm. But Mary and Martha was crying. They was saying, my brother has dead. And the word said that when Jesus got close enough to the place that Martha was the first one of the sisters to run out and come to Jesus and say, well, Lord, if you had just been here, my son and my brother would not have died. And Jesus said, well, you're looking at death one way. But I'm telling you that God's going to give you the glory in another way. Oh, yes. And then he said, I know that he shall rise again. Yeah. yeah, she said, yes, I know there will be a resurrection. But she didn't realize that Jesus was going to speak the words and Lazarus was going to get up. But she's only looking at it from a long-term perspective. And then the word got back that where is Mary? You came here all by yourself, but Mary stayed back at the house right along with the moaners. They were groaning all the time the ways about the loss of their brother. And don't you know that when you lose a loved one, there's something about your body that becomes pressed down. There's something about you feel depressed. You feel a, a wholeness. You feel I'm void. You feel like I'm lost all by myself. But let me tell you, God said, I'm a comfort keeper. I will provide for you in the time of needs. Let me tell you that Ma Martha said, well, Mary, Martha's Jesus is already here. And Mary said, well, I got to go and see him for myself. And let me tell you, the word said, John recorded that when she ran there, she said the same words when she got down and bowed down and worshiped him. Said, Jesus, if you had just been here, I know that you got power over sickness. I know you got power, but this thing called death have already claimed my brother and now he's dead and, and nothing can be done about it. But Jesus said, look at here, let me tell you what the word of God that Jesus told her. He said, where have they laid him? And, and we got a little small verse that we have to always call upon and we use it sometime when we give it a blessed food. We said, Jesus wept, John 11, 35. But mm -hmm. let me tell you, Jesus not weeping because of the food you have to eat, but he said, Jesus wept because he was concerned that they were crying about the loss of a loved one and he knew he didn't care for the works and when I began to read this word of God they said look and behold because he crying 
how much he loved him and, and now he loved him because now he see him and they've been gripped by this thing called death but Jesus was not weeping because of death but he was weeping because he knew they were sad and sometimes, sometimes we don't understand how God has compassion for us. He see us doing things that we don't need to do and he said, yes, my heart reaches out to you that you can have a much better life, the best quality of life if you only listen and follow my words. I'm glad what Jesus told him, uh, where does he lay? Uh, they said that he's in a cave now, and the cave has a stone that laid before it. Uh, don't you know that when you're buried, uh, you're put in a, in, during those days, they carve out the area, and you lay the bodies down, uh, and they say he's already dead. Uh, Jesus said, where is he laid? Uh, the lay means that he's laying down, uh, but when Jesus got there, uh, the first thing he said, I read to you in verse number 39, he said, take away the stone. Uh, why we want to take away the stone? Well, first of all, he did not want Lazarus uh, to try to pull the stone back, but he needed mankind uh, to move the barrier yeah. that now separate him uh, from the area where he needs to be free. Uh, Sometimes God says you got to move things uh, out of your way uh, yes, that may yes, wait yes, for you to yeah. yeah. see the yeah. blessings that, that God got in store for you. Uh, he said, move the stone. Uh, get it out of the way. Uh, but I love what Jesus did. Uh, he began, y'all, uh, not doing something things uh, without confirming uh, with God Almighty. Uh, I want you to look and look and see uh, what Jesus did. Uh, he stood outside uh, of that grave. Uh, he stood outside uh, when the stone rolled away. Uh, but the first thing he did, y'all, was he prayed unto God Almighty. Uh, there's yes, something for all of us uh, to recognize. Uh, we got to keep praying uh, yeah, when we cannot see our way. Uh, keep calling uh, on yeah, God yeah, Almighty. Yeah, yeah. The word said he looked up uh, and began to say, God Almighty, you already hear me. I call upon you. I know all my faith relies in you. You and I are one. I know the power you have. I'm calling on you right now because I know it's not for me, but for all these who gather around, who's crying, hooping, and hollering. But I want to let you know that you can turn this circumstance around. All I hear you crying to God Almighty. Keep praying, y'all. Even in the midnight hour, yeah. call on God Almighty. Oh, Say, yeah. Lord, I may not can see the answer, yeah. but I know you said uh, yeah. that you are answer. I yeah. the dogs of hour. He said, Father, what you said, uh, I didn't know you have all power. What you said now, uh, I need to do uh, what you asked me to do. Uh, and the first thing he did uh, was call his name uh, Lazarus. Uh, yeah. And yeah. the word yeah. says, uh, he cried out loud. Uh, yeah. well, why did he cry out loud? Uh, he was already in a cave, y'all. Uh, I got news for you. He could have whispered his name. Uh, but he still would have heard. Uh, because God can speak. Uh, and the let's whisper a voice. Uh, and mighty things would happen. Uh, but he cried out loud. Uh, he cried out uh, so they could hear him. Uh, he oh, yeah. didn't call nobody else. Uh, I'm calling for Lazarus. I called him to get up. Uh, and he brought me here uh, because of him. Uh, and I want you to know uh, God's got uh, selected power. He can move uh, in mysterious ways. Ways, uh, Lazarus, uh, get up, uh, yeah. come forth. Uh, the word of God uh, went in like uh, the spirit. Uh, he was laying down, y'all. Uh, but in my own mind, uh, I can see him getting up, uh, standing up, uh, because he heard the words. Uh, someone is calling me. Uh, I heard the old one uh, says, uh, hush, uh, hush. Uh, somebody uh, is calling my name. Uh, hush, uh, somebody uh, is calling my name. Uh, he's got Jesus, I'm glad y'all that when he calls your name, uh, he knows uh, the word of God says, uh, he knows the numbers of your hairs uh, on your head, uh, yes, down yes. the soles of your feet. Uh, hush, uh, Lazarus uh, got up uh, and I got my own mind. Uh, he could not walk uh, in a narrow way. Uh, he had some things around him uh, in his feet. Uh, they were bound, a uh, body uh, wrapped up uh, in gray clothes, uh, but he couldn't be still, uh, Jesus uh, is calling me, uh, I got to move, uh, I hear the voice of uh, God Almighty, uh, sometime uh, you got to move uh, when you feel like uh, I cannot make a step, uh, but praise be to God, uh, I'm going to take my strength uh, and hop my way uh, where God is, uh, I know uh, he called me uh, and I got to respond, uh, I'm glad to See the crowd now, uh, the eyes are uh, getting bucked up, uh, the eyes 
answer could not believe Here's a dead man standing up all wrapped up But Jesus said you know I can't leave him in that condition And I heard him say loose him, loose him, unwrap him, untie him I got news for you, your words if God's words will set down free if God's word will give healing God's word said loose him and let him go let him go take all those things that had him tied up they know I'm a reverend y'all dead man need to be alive and I got news for you that when you receive Christ Jesus you've been made new you've been made alive I'm glad things uh, have been removed now. Uh, he's also uh, brand new. Uh, if you recall what the word says, uh, he died uh, because of sickness. Uh, but when he came out, uh, sickness uh, had no more power. Uh, I'm glad, y'all, uh, that when God heals you, uh, you become whole, uh, you become well. Uh, and I'm glad uh, he was now uh, able to leave behind uh, that old grave. Uh, but the word says, uh, those that saw him uh, begin to believe him. Uh, but I don't care. Uh, Jesus Christ himself uh, can come down. Uh, there will still be doubts. Uh, there will still be others say, uh, It's got to be magic. Uh, it's got to be soothsaying. Uh, some kind of way uh, they brought it past it. Uh, but I'm glad uh, that when God raised you up, uh, when God make you whole, uh, when God make you well, uh, everything uh, will be all right. Uh, I'm glad. Uh, I'll go, uh, I'll go uh, and I will be set free. Uh, I know about you, y'all. Uh, when sin uh, had been wrapped up uh, and tied up, uh, I look to Jesus Christ. Uh, he's my intercessor. Uh, he's my baby. Uh, he's my redeemer, y'all. Uh, but God of my uh, I'm glad uh, that he brought us uh, from such a mighty long way. Uh, cannot keep us. Uh, we are less set free uh, by the power of God Almighty. Uh, yes, uh, yeah. he was set free. Uh, but the word says uh, they kept trying uh, to die him, uh, kill him again. Uh, but I want to let you know uh, that when Jesus, uh, after Jesus uh, went to the cross, uh, the word says uh, that Lazarus, uh, Mary, and Martha had to get out of town uh, because the same folks uh, want to kill him uh, all over again. Uh, but the word says uh, they went down uh, to Cyprus. Uh, and while they were Cyprus, uh, they were still telling the good news. Uh, yes, uh, he might have died on the Calvary cross. Uh, but early, uh, such a morning, uh, he got up and declared, uh, all the power uh, is in my hand. Uh, I'm glad, y'all, uh, that he lives. Uh, because he lives, uh, we can walk, uh, we can talk. Uh, we already uh, overcome all the things uh, where the world tried uh, to hold us down. Uh, God has promised us, uh, I'll make you alive. Uh, I'll keep you uh, with perfect peace. Uh, I'll keep you uh, in a joy uh, that passes uh, all understanding. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Yeah. Come forth. Thank you, Lord. Because you love me. Because you set him free, we also shall be free. And when you do what God wants you to do, God has promised you, you can rise, you can go forth. Yes, yes. And above all in going forth, yes. you'll be free in him. Yes. Because sin cannot take from you what God has already promised to you. God has given you everlasting life. Yes. The enemy wish he could take your life. Yeah. But he said, come to see, see a kill and to destroy. Yeah. But praise be to God. The Lord has the final say so. Yes, sir.